Hey everybody, welcome to this video. We've got some great questions that we collected from our group of 5K challenge people out there. Thank you. About your feet mm -hmm. and about running and all that great stuff. And even better, we have Dr. Brannick here with us. He is a new doc here in Jackson. Not new to Jackson, mm -hmm. but he's just new and getting ready to help us all. Um, his podiatry practice opens August 8th at Cascade Ridge, and we're glad that you came in here early in the morning and ready to uh, share some information. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Dave. Appreciate you guys having me in. Um, like Dave said, our practice is opening uh, in Spring Arbor Road on Cascades Ridge on August 8th, and today we're really going to focus on the Run for Health, um, the 5K event with a walking component as well as a running component, a race that Allegiance is gonna be doing here in about seven or eight weeks. So we're all gearing up for that. Everybody's been training and mm -hmm. we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the conditions people might be getting into as they're several weeks into their training regimen, how we can prevent some injuries, how we can really finish strong through the next few weeks and get everybody ready for the race and really to continue to work out and live a healthy lifestyle uh, for the rest of the summer and hopefully um, for months to come. Mm -hmm. And one thing to keep in mind, this is some advice here. Um, but if you really have questions specific to yourself, make sure to contact your own physician or come in and see Dr. Brannick here. Absolutely. Um, so, Andrew. <coughs> Good morning, Dave. Questions, yeah. And you've got some issues, too. I'll, well, who doesn't have a few issues? with Yeah. Feet? Maybe we'll start out with your problems. Really? Wow. That's yeah. very kind. Um, you know what? I don't yeah. feel alone in in my issue. Well, think, we did have some other. I think comments we have quite a few people that had questions about calluses, and what are they? How can you treat them? You know, the general uh, question for me is really: I've had kind of a long-standing bout with a callus, mm -hmm. and I'm just curious what the best option is for me to treat it because it comes and it goes. And then it hurts, and then it doesn't hurt. And, you know, I've been kind of having this dance for about four years now. So calluses are something that we do see often in the office. And just to kind of start at the beginning, what is a callus? The callus is basically the body's own mechanism of laying down a protective layer of skin. We see calluses on our hands if we're outside shoveling a lot or doing physical activity. And on the feet, it's no different. Uh, callus is the body protecting itself. And so we ask, why do we have a callus? And most of the time, it's repetitive motion, which would be like running, a new workout regimen. And sometimes it's an underlying cause where there's a bony deformity that's actually mm. pushing on the skin. The body's trying to protect itself by putting down a thicker layer. So what can we do for it? We can always do some conservative things like use a pumice stone when the foot is nice and moist and try to remove that callus. You can mm -hmm. come into the office, we can actually pare down the callus uh, using a sharp instrumentation. But really we want to prevent the callus from forming altogether. Right. So good supportive shoe gear. And we'll get into shoe gear, which we can actually jump into right now. Um, when we're thinking about running and training in general, you really want a shoe that's going to provide support in your arch because that's where a lot of your propulsion comes from, something that's going to support your ankles. And so some shoes that I recommend would be like a New Balance, Asics, or Brooks. Dave actually brought in a, a good running shoe here that I think he's using in the mornings. Yeah. And again, it's a New Balance, and if I don't, you don't mind, Dave. Yeah. So the best thing about this shoe is when I go to bend it, it's not going to go right in half. And if you can take your shoe and really twist it in half and manipulate it, that's really not a great running shoe, even though some of the minimalistic things are out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really want a shoe, especially for, you know, just starting out training. You want something that's really going to be rigid, has a nice sole, and that's what the New Balance, the Brooks, the Asics, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good way to start out. Um, going back to the calluses, um, putting in a, a foot insert always helps. It gives a little more cushion, a well-padded cotton sock. The guys are having a little trouble with some of the smell over there, but they'll be, they'll be okay. <laughs> um, so no. really preventing that callus from forming altogether is the, is the key component. Yeah. If there is a bony deformity, um, we actually had a question here from Mark, which is a great question about sesamoid fractures. And we do see calluses mm -hmm. under the big toe, which is where the sesamoid is located. Uh, sometimes we actually have to go in surgically and remove that bony deformity or even shave it down. It's usually mm -hmm. a very minimal incision and people can be back on their feet in a few weeks. So it's always good to get things like that checked out and not to let them progress into right. a wound. Right. right. So sometimes a lot of people have like heel pain in the morning. I think we had someone ask that question, Sarah, uh, Sandra. Sandra. Sandra asked that. Yeah. Heel, she has heel pain in the morning. She needs to flex her foot to get moving. It's so tight. Is that pretty common? 
So this is common. And Sandra, this is a question that we hear in the office all the time. If you have pain that first step in the morning, uh, the medical term is post-static dyskinesia, which really means I haven't been moving for a while. And when I start to move again, like in the morning, it feels like a sharp stabbing pain. Mm -hmm. That pain is usually right in the heel. So that's classic plantar fasciitis. Oh. The plantar fascia runs along the bottom of the foot. It supports the arch. And with repetitive motion, like running or any new workout regimen, that fascia actually becomes inflamed. And usually the issue is that the problem is in the heel, but it's really originating from tight muscles. Mm -hmm. So we can usually get people's plantar, fascia, plantar fasciitis healed without surgery. And the main thing that we do is a stretching regimen. Plantar fasciitis is caused by tight calf muscles. And so we can do different stretching. Uh, usually we recommend about three times per day, five minutes. This is something you can do at your office whether you're at work first thing in the morning while you're brushing the teeth, I always say is a good time to do it. So basically any way to just stre stretch that calf muscle. Um, another great one is to let your heels kind of drop off the back of a step mm -hmm. that stretches not only the plantar fascia, but also the calf muscles. And so stretching is really just a huge uh, component um, of preparing for these races, of maintaining your overall health and trying to, pre to prevent injury. So I always recommend, you know, a warm up of at least eight minutes before you do a workout, eight minutes afterwards, and then even before you go to bed at night um, to do about eight to 10 minutes of stretching, because that's really going to alleviate a lot of the, you know, lactic acid, the buildup in your muscles, and just really give your body that relaxing, relaxing stretch that it needs uh, to pre prevent injury. Yeah, cool. And that kind of reminds me of Jennifer's question here is, um, her feet and ankles get really stiff after a long run. Is it usual? And is there anything she can do to prevent it? Another great question, Jennifer. The first thing I'd, I'm happy that so many people are getting involved here and are, are really taking initiative and, and doing these running events. Um, so first thing I would talk about um, with Jennifer is really building up a pyramid for her workout strategy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to just go out day one and run five miles, especially if you haven't been yeah. working out. And even if you have been working out, I recommend kind of a, a staircase type, type of approach where you're building up, putting stresses on the body, and then you're having an area and a time of plateau where mm -hmm. you're allowing your body to rest and really, you know, regain um, its strength. Um, and also we recommend cross training, not only just yeah. doing running and walking, because that is a very repetitive um, activity, but swimming, biking, and strength training will really hmm. help people to, you know, reach these goals and to not hit the plateau and they can continue to build and build and build, increase their, you know, time so that they're running faster and um, hopefully getting lighter, which will reduce the stresses on their feet. So mix it up, mix it up. Mix exactly. It up I'm trying to learn some of those like strength training things right now. Cause you know, I've got the running, I'm going on that, but I saw you practicing your squats. I was setting up the cameras in here. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. Um, so let's get back to shoes for a second here. These are brand new shoes. Well, three weeks old now. They've got a, a few miles, literally just a few miles. Just a few. Mm -hmm. But how long do shoes usually last? Another very good question, Dave. So we want to look at the back of the shoe. A lot of times the wear pattern towards the back of the shoe will indicate if the shoes are worn out. And these can actually mm -hmm. be a great indicator for the type of foot that you have. If you start to see wear on the inside mm -hmm. of the shoe or the outside of the shoe, it actually shows myself and the patient, you know, where we can accommodate with an orthotic, with a shoe insert, mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, to try to prevent some of the biomechanical ailments that patients feel. Um, to give an actual mileage, a lot of shoes will um, tell you, you know, these shoes are good for 400 miles, 500 miles, but it really depends on your running style. Yep. Um, I would say if you're an avid runner and you're running several times a week, you probably want to change your shoes at least once a year. That's, that's kind of a good uh, gauge. Mm. And again, when you get a new pair of shoes, it's like anything, you got to break it in. We talked a little bit about calluses. That kind of reminds me of blisters. And if you're getting blisters in your running shoes, that's definitely not a normal thing and it's not good. Mm -hmm. Blisters can lead to wounds, wounds can lead to infections, and it can actually hinder your progress. And it usually sidelines the, the runner for a while. Yeah. So very simple things, a good fitting shoe. There shouldn't really be any sliding or play when you're running. You don't want your toes jamming at the end of the shoe. Mm -hmm. You probably are in a, a shoe that's a little bit too big if you're having jamming issues. Interesting. And uh, just a well-padded cotton sock is usually recommended to kind of wick the sweat away. Yeah, and I've got these weird socks here. What about these kind of things? They've got like little mm. stretchy things and pads and well, all sorts of weird. They do match your shoes, so that makes you look right. cool. Yeah. So that's right. important. 
Um, but those look like great socks. Like I said, they'll wick the, the sweat away. They're cotton, and that's just fine for for the running running shoes. Um, we did touch on a little bit about the sliding in the shoe, and yeah. we had a question on here about uh, dark toenails or even oh. – um, this was from Sarah. She talked about getting a dead toenail and some of her toenails falling off. So we would definitely want to prevent that. And most of the time, that's mm-hmm. because of a repetitive micro trauma where the nails mm-hmm. with every single step are getting kind of pummeled inside Oof. the shoe. Gosh. So how do we prevent that? Again, a good fitting shoe, mm-hmm. an orthotic, an arch support. Um, and if, if it does get to the point that the nail is falling off, that's when you'd want to definitely come in. Try not to take the nail off yourself. Sometimes we can actually evacuate <laughs> in the office if there's a little hematoma or blood under the nail yeah. and get you back, you know, to working out in a, in a proper shoe gear. Running's real, man. Whew. Real hard. Yeah. But um, you can take it easy. So, Dr. Brannick, what are some of the things that you can do to work up to this 5K? Like, what things should we keep in mind? Great question. Again, we... We talk about what is a workout regimen, and I know even I find myself sometimes you, it's tough to find time to run, and you just go out and get that workout in, but you really should have a game plan, especially we're about seven weeks away from the race now. So you, even just writing out on a piece of paper, if you're going to run the five miles, you know, maybe by week four from today, you want to be working up to three and a half miles, then four miles, and my recommendation is about increasing your workout 10% per week. And that will help to prevent overuse injuries mm-hmm. like shin splints, yeah. knee pain, some of the plantar fasciitis that we see. So 10% a week increase. And just remembering to do the stretching, again, we think about proper hydration. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good rule of thumb is for every 20 minutes of exercise, you want to consume about eight ounces of fluid, preferably water. So some of the things we all know about like hydration, we yeah. forget, you know, we're in our busy lifestyles, we're trying yeah. to get that workout in. Um, so hydration is huge. And then again, it goes back to the stretching before the workout, after the workout. Um, some of the foot related injuries and complaints that we see are really related to tight hamstrings, mm. tight lower back. Yeah. So doing the, the full body cross training, stretching will help to prevent these injuries and will really keep people on their, mm. on their feet without pain. I've, I definitely noticed some tightness in the legs and uh, stuff You're from complaining running. Complaining about your calf? I know, but I've been stretching them real good. You know And what? it's gotten quite a bit better. Maybe we should wrap this up and talk about foot care. Oh, I mean, okay, yeah. we're talking about how just uh, rough running and walking, mm-hmm. and yeah. especially when you have new shoes. Mm-hmm. You know, let's treat the feet. Let's Ooh. let's make them feel good. Treat the feet. Tell me about this. Tell me about the origins of this because I absolutely love this thing. I got it, I think, off Amazon for Christmas, it's like, like a little foot two massager. years ago. Yeah, it was only like uh, $14, 15 hmm. and it's amazing. So this is a great little instrument here. This is a kind of a foot massaging device. Uh, there's many different types of these out there on the market. Um, you can see that it's basically going to start with just a low massage all the way into a deep massage, and this is something that's great for after a workout. Even mm-hmm. if you can put this under your desk at work, maybe you're running in the morning or at mm-hmm. night during the day to do a little bit of tissue massage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, similar to this would be rolling a tennis ball under the heel. And if you're really having some pain and inflammation, a frozen water bottle will also work mm-hmm. under the rolling heel it. and rolling oh, that frozen oh, water bottle. You're getting the idea. cryotherapy of the cold. Man. You're getting a little bit of the pressure from the water bottle on the heel. But again, we hope that you don't get to the point where you're having the pain. We want to prevent that pain. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. with the stretching, the good shoe gear, the cross training and ramping up that program on a staircase where you're you're not just going straight for the five miles. Yeah. You kind of have a plan for the for the next eight weeks to, to work yourself up to that that yeah. distance. So all these are mm-hmm. great tools to utilize. Cool. And I definitely recommend this type of uh, you know stuff to my patients. Right. If only there was a group that got a ton of water bottles earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. Was that our group? Oh yes. Oh yeah. We got a lot of water bottles. Mm-hmm. Um. So. I think that pretty much wraps it up for the questions we had. We had a lot of great questions. Feel free to leave some more in the group. Um, You know, we got a lot of smart people in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, But Dr. Brannick, thanks for joining us this morning. And once again, people can come start seeing you August 8th. Absolutely. Cascade Ridge. Cool. Appreciate you guys having me here. Uh, Good luck to all the runners out there. We hope to see you guys at the race. And uh, congratulations on starting this journey of exercise and health. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thanks.